from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube. Covering AWS reInvent 2015. Now your host, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com here with SiliconANGLE TV's live water wall coverage from AWS reInvent 2015 here in Las Vegas. My co-host for this segment is Brian Gracely, and we're happy to have back CUBE alum, CEO of Zadara Storage, Nelson Nehum. Nelson, yep. thank you so much for joining no, us thank again. You, thank you, Stu, and Brian for All to right, me. yeah. So, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we were with you in San Francisco at another big show around the same size, order of magnitude, yes. uh, VMworld. So, uh, bring us up to speed. You guys had a couple of announcements uh, here leading up to the show. Uh, to tell, tell us yeah, what Yeah, actually, start. this is uh, how we position our company. We are enterprise storage as a service, so we are kind of the enterprise class storage that you will see in VMworld with the elasticity of AWS. So VMworld and AWS back to back is actually is our sweet spot. And uh, in terms of announcement, uh, we, we did the automatic backup to Amazon S3. Uh, we are announced uh, last week uh, a huge growth this year in terms of new customers. Uh, so it's going very well. Yeah. All right, so uh, you know, we, we've talked with you for a few years and I think this show was one of the first that I spoke to you at. You guys are part of the, the Direct Connect offering. Yeah. Um, and you work across lots of solutions. Can you just walk through how that works as to you know, where you sit and, and what solutions you fit into? Yeah, so um, because we provide uh, SLAs, like enterprise storage arrays, uh, we run in um, basically native hardware and we position put this hardware in colocation facilities that have uh, very close to AWS, uh, actually in the same uh, city if possible, and we use Direct Connect uh, to connect to them. Um, typically it's Equinix facilities here in the US, uh, in Australia, in Tokyo, and, and there are IRCOM in, in Ireland, and, and this gives us the, the possibility to be at a very low latency from AWS, and provide really good enterprise storage capabilities to AWS customers. Uh, AWS is a great partner. We were, I think, the first Direct Connect customer and probably we are the bigger, biggest one. Um, and they adjusted even some of the Direct Connect capabilities to, to be able to have service providers like us that are multi-tenant to be able to connect uh, in a multi-tenant fashion and still provide the security so every customer has their own VPC associated with the storage. So for the customer, the storage is completely private inside the VPC. So this magic is done by the Direct Connect folks and uh, it is really good. Yeah, you, you, your solution actually fits into probably what Amazon would consider the hybrid story, um, because it's something that lives outside of you know Amazon's uh, you know purview, uh, the, but that they have services that kind of reach out and, yeah. and, and connect to that. Yeah, so we we complement Amazon in, in some of the workloads that are not possible today uh, with Amazon, like uh, SMB file storage, connection with Active Directory, um, remote replication, constant replication of the storage between East Coast and West Coast, on-premise to the cloud, uh, cloud to cloud. There are multiple things that we do that Amazon doesn't do, but uh, this is why we are a good partner of Amazon, and they, they basically recognize that we have a, a really good st uh, and strong storage offering, and they allow us to connect to their cloud. So any customer in Amazon can use us completely seamless. They don't need to deal with Direct Connect and location and anything like that. For the customer is just to go to the console, provision the storage and, and use it. Yeah, yeah, so Nelson, you guys do a good job positioning for the, the enterprise and your purchase like storage, as opposed to most people when they consider, there's lots of services from Amazon that are storage, but you know, I, I'm not, when I'm choosing storage, I don't say, oh, I'm going to go to Amazon instead of buying XYZ array. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, when you're talking to customers, you know, what's the mindset of how you know, kind of the enterprise storage buyer thinks of the cloud? Yeah, so um, I think that in typical customers, they want to move to Amazon and to other cloud providers. They, they love the possibility to run workloads in the cloud. Uh, it is the fact that the traditional storage is so different than the cloud-based storage that make it complicated. 
Uh, and, and this is where we, we can come in and say, listen, with us, our storage service look like a traditional storage array for you. You can mount with uh, iSCSI or, or NFS or SMB um, the storage array and you can do exactly the same thing that you will do with uh, NetApp or EMC on premise, uh, but you still pay per use and, and the same way per hour like, like Amazon. So that, that's, that's the, the thing that complements uh, Amazon offering, especially on the storage, that the storage in the cloud is radical, di radically different than the on premise. And, yeah. and we provide the same capabilities of enterprise storage on premise also in the cloud and, and on premise. So, yeah, so Stu was talking about earlier, you know, you guys had a big presence a few weeks ago at VMworld, big presence here at, at AWS reInvent, very different audiences. Like, how do you shift your conversation between this audience, which tends to be more application developer focused, and, and a VMworld, you know, kind of on premises enterprise? You know, the capabilities are there, but how do you shift the conversation so people understand yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah, so we are, <laughs> in one case, like we talk, like here in, in Amazon, we talk about enterprise storage capabilities, why you can, what you can do with our storage uh, that you cannot do with Amazon. So all the uh, snapshots and remote replication and the typical storage conversation uh, we, we do he, here in AWS. In, in VMworld, we talk about the, as a service, the paper use, the elasticity, so we, we talk in VMworld about the cloud part yeah. uh, that is different than traditional storage. Uh, so when we talk to customers at VMworld, they, they are not looking for how our snapshot is different than NetApp snapshot, they are looking at us to be able to provision storage without the capex and completely elastic and have, maintain the enterprise class capabilities, but without the need to, to pay up front and, and you can expand and shrink. Here, everybody understand the pay per use and the pay per hour. We talk more about the enterprise storage capability. This is why it is a, a sweet spot, uh, both of the shows. Right, right. So, you spoke about the strong partnership you have with Amazon. Um, how has that changed over the last couple of years, if it has? And as, as Amazon continues to add functionality, is there, you know, people I guess are always asking, is there that tension, you know, how do you, how, how do you manage that relationship? Yeah, uh, so I, I must say that Amazon is uh, an amazing partner because the, and I think that the, a big part of it is how they are structured. Uh, the storage team probably don't like us but the networking team and the EC2 team, they like us more. So, uh, and as we talk to different groups in Amazon, there are different reactions to what we do. Some will feel that we are competing, competing some not. The, regarding the question about Amazon releasing new features, yes, they are releasing new features. We also <laughs> release new features. Um, my view is that because Amazon is the top innovator in the cloud, if we have a product that is better than Amazon in the storage side, we can not only attract Amazon customers, but also the rest of the world. The, the rest of the cloud provider, service provider, they don't have the deep pockets uh, of, that Amazon has to develop everything. So we are basically proving that our storage uh, is really good in the world. <laughs> let's say the most difficult field that is Amazon itself, competing in innovation with Amazon, uh, and this means that everybody else is a, a potential customer for us. We, we want to maintain the leading edge, and the, the best way to maintain the leading edge is to be ahead of the leader, let's yeah. say. Yeah. So, actually, one of the things Andy Jassy said in his keynote is that customers are looking for it to be easier to get there you know, information into the cloud. Uh, they had both the Kinesis Firehose that they did for real-time data and, and the new Snowball, uh, which is I'm going to send this box, you know, two-day yeah. shipping, get it to you, yeah. you load it up and, and ship it back. You, you, you had some interesting points as to how you get data into the cloud and how, how you make that yeah, easy for Yeah, yeah, so first of all, we, we have been doing the, <laughs> this kind of Snowball forever and, and for free, not, not for not $200. So, uh, this is one of the uh, ways that we uh, inject uh, data to the cloud. 
uh, this is good for migration, but uh, also there is a, a, a second place where because we are on premise and in the cloud, a customer of us can have our system on premise as a storage system. This is not a gateway, it's the full storage. Consume paper use and can replicate into Amazon, constantly replication. And this means that they can move data to the cloud, they can move from the cloud back on premise. It's not only one way, sometimes it's, it's both ways. Uh, so th this will be the, the second uh, yeah. way that uh, we, we can do that. Uh, so th this week Andy's been talking quite a bit. He's been saying, look, um, there's never been a better time to store more data. It's, it's getting cheaper, there's services around it for analysis. Th that model tends to resonate very well with people that want to do analytics, right? Yeah. The more data I have, the better my data sets. Does that resonate as well with the storage audience who's sort of been conditioned over time to say like, hey, you know, be careful of quotas on how much you set, you know, how much you store, how much you back up, or do you find that they're going, it's cheaper, it's easier, let's just keep throwing, you know, store more, keep it longer. Um, yeah, we, we find that the customer want to store more yeah. and keep it longer and do analytics. Even the people that will not do analytics before, they, they want to get and do analytics. Uh, definitely, we see a, a big move toward storing more and more, um, and this is, uh, I think that this is one of the uh, things that allow us to, to provide on-premise a really good service. We, we have been working with uh, body-worn cameras, for example, the small cities may need a petabyte of storage just to store the- Every day, every, every hour. Every, da every day, every hour of every policeman. And, and this need a lot of storage, need to be on premise, and a lot of storage mean huge capex, and also you need to have a team of administrators. So we completely remove that. People can say, okay, no capex, you grow gradually as, as you bring more data, and also be, because we do remote management and it is fully as a service, the customer can have our storage on premise, but they don't need to manage the storage. It's, Managing a one petabyte of storage is, is take time and, and take resources that we completely remove. So in our case, it's zero capex and reduce it opex. Yeah. So so Nelson, the storage industry has been measured by you know how many gigabytes, terabytes, exabytes are out there and, and revenue that I can you know look at from you know either disks in a server or you know external storage arrays. Uh, you know, one of the things we've been looking at is look at you know how much storage revenue does Amazon do, Microsoft. Uh, look at all the SaaS vendors. I, I, I mean, you know, Salesforce and everybody. Maybe Salesforce doesn't have you know huge amount of data, but if you add all them up, it's growing very fast and it's very different. Uh, you know, you're part of this trend. How do you look at that? Uh, you know, where do you see the storage industry going over the next couple of years, and how, how do you kind of measure that? You know, do you measure that against the traditional storage industry, or what metrics do you use? Yeah, so I think that the, what what I see is that, and related to the previous question, people want to store more, store uh, faster, uh, access more frequently, uh, do more things with the data. So uh, the trend is to definitely keep storing more and more of, of the data and do more and more analytics. It's not only writing more, it's also reading more. Uh, and, and in terms of, um, uh, so capacities, we are seeing all the time growing and growing at, at very, very fast uh, rate. We see the drives are growing, the flash are growing. <laughs> in terms of capacity, uh, everything is, is growing. So, um, and the other thing I want to mention here is that uh, it is a really good opportunity to provide additional services, and this is why we're a service provider and not a product provider. We don't provide just the storage, we provide additional services like backup and disaster recovery. Uh, we do have, a, for example, a feature that you can have our storage in two data centers and stretch and be able to do fa transparent failover, have zero RTO, zero RPO. Uh, once you put a lot of data, it's good, but you need to protect the data, and, and this is the additional services that we provide. Yeah, it's, uh, I guess my, my final comment is, uh, at VMworld, there was a huge amount of storage there, and really saw an increase this year at this show here. So, uh, thank you so much, Nelson, for, for joining us. Uh, storage, a critical component of you know, IT in general, and, and, and growing very much in the cloud. So, uh, Nelson Nahum, CEO of Zadar Storage, uh, thanks so much for joining us. We'll be right back with lots more coverage here 
from reInvent 2015. Thank you.